Hey everyone, welcome back to Knowing Nuclear. Now, in order for a fuel to be of any use to us in a nuclear reactor, it must be able to undergo fission and it must be able to sustain a chain reaction. In today's video, we'll be discussing the differences between fissile, fertile, and fissionable materials. But first, let's take a look at this simplified diagram of fission. So over here, we have our large nucleus, and it's going to be hit by a neutron. The neutron will be absorbed by the nucleus as well as its energy. And this absorption or capture is going to cause the bonds of the large nucleus to break and it's going to split apart, fissioning into two smaller nuclei as well as energy. And it's this energy that we're interested in for the purposes of nuclear reactors and nuclear energy. All right, now let's look at fissile materials. Fissile materials can undergo fission, so that's good, but only after they absorb a slow-moving neutron. Sometimes these slow neutrons are also referred to as thermal neutrons. All right, now fissile materials typically have an odd number of neutrons and an even number of protons. They can sustain chain reactions. And a perfect example of a fissile material is uranium-235. Next, we have fertile materials. Now, fertile materials cannot undergo fission. However, they are able to transform into fissile materials by absorbing neutrons. A good example of this is uranium-238, which cannot undergo fission, but it can absorb neutrons, turning it into plutonium-239, which can undergo fission. So plutonium-239 is fissile. And fertile nuclei typically have even numbers of neutrons, and even numbers of protons. Okay, the last one are fissionable materials. Now, fissionable materials can undergo fission after absorbing slow or fast neutrons. So, in this sense, all fissile materials are fissionable, but not all fissionable materials are fissile. So, now that we understand the difference between these three, we can use this to continue our knowledge of nuclear.